Hey guys, so I have another distribution first impressions review video for you today. This one is a bit of a fledgling distribution, but it sort of caught my eye and I thought I'd want to share it with you today. This is Rebellin Linux. Uh, it comes from the great country of India and is based on Debian Unstable. Uh, and now it's included with its non-free repositories. So you get your NVIDIA drivers and all that kind of stuff as well. It comes with codecs installed out of the box and uh, it comes with a pretty standard software selection. I can run through this pretty quickly. I've installed a few things. I've been playing with it in a virtual machine over the past couple of days now. So I've, I've put on a Chromium web browser, but Firefox, it, it actually came with Liferia, which is a, it's a pretty good choice. You can, of course, um, install Steam as well on it. I've tried that, that works quite well. Uh, and it also came with WhatsApp, um, which isn't particularly popular here in the UK as far as I'm aware, but I do understand that there are um, a number of countries around the world which use what, WhatsApp quite, uh, you know, quite, quite extensively. Uh, the remote desktop viewer came with it, Empathy came with it, FileZilla came with it. Yeah, so Firefox was the default browser. LibreOffice, it came with the Totem video player. Apparently it used to come with VLC, but they changed it in with Totem. I personally prefer Totem. Uh, it seems to fit just more, um, it just seems to fit well within a GTK environment a little better. Um, and it, it seems a little faster than VLC, like VLC feels a little clunkier. It's got more features with it, uh, of course, but sometimes in a lot of cases you don't need features. You just need something quick and that works. Uh, I put MPV on just to see if it works. It works. It comes with Brazero. Um, um, it came, comes with the Pulse Audio, audio um, Pulse Audio uh, volume control as well, which is a great little, um, if you've got a lot of sound cards like I do, like I'm recording on one mic now, I've got like a mic on my headset, I've got the uh, inbuilt mic on the computer, or not the inbuilt mic, I've got another mic on the computer. So um, that's always good to have. Um, comes with the GIMP, it comes with a few actually. Comes with Shotwell, Simple Scan, so it's a pretty decent software selection. Um, it, the actual um, out of the box um, theme doesn't actually look anything like this. I have been uh, playing around with the theming settings quite a lot. I, I, it doesn't even come with the panel. Uh, no, it does come with the panel. It comes with Plank, but it doesn't have it. Um, it doesn't have it sort of up and running as as, um, as uh, out of the box. Uh, but it's easy enough to get running. Uh, I don't usually like panels like these, but. Um, but I thought I might give it a whirl. Um, I still don't particularly like them. I feel that this panel across the bottom does the job just as well. It, it does it better, if you ask me. But um, some people like some people like the uh, the plank dock, um, so I thought I might uh, include it there. Um, and it comes, yeah, it comes with Mate, and it also comes uh, with GNOME. It comes in 32-bit and 64-bit, and they do actually say that if you go to the download page here, they do actually say that, um, I don't, does it say here? No, I think it might say in the FAQs that for in a lot of cases, it's worth going with the 32-bit. Uh, it's worth going with the 32-bit because it has the PAE kernel, which apparently um, allows you, uh, you know, it, it supports a greater amount of memory. I think it's up to 32 gig, maybe. Um, and it uses a different kernel from the standard one in, in Debian uh, Unstable anyway. Uh, it's a rolling distribution. I think I may have already said that. So you don't have to keep reinstalling it. Uh, and um, I've got to say, I have did a big upgrade and I upgraded for the first time after I installed it. It was a pretty hefty upgrade size, but, um, but it, yeah, I mean, I haven't had any problems so far as of yet. But I do think that, you know, it is based on Debian Unstable. It kind of feels like a lot of the software, um, for example, I can give you an example of the, the kind of the up-to-date. So this is uh, version 56 um, and Firefox, I think, is it version 51 now? As, as recording this video, this might be the latest version. Let's have a look. Um, there's the about. So, yeah, yeah, 51.01. So in Debian Unstable, it really does come with, with the latest and greatest software. Which is which is pretty good. So if you're looking for Debian, but but something a bit more um, current, then this is a this is this is a potential this is a potential one. Now, like I say, it is a fledgling distribution, so it's it does feel like it's it's still to grow into its roots. Uh, one of the interesting things about this distribution as well is um, they offer email support, which. I don't know, there's a part of me that says that's taking on a, a pretty big monumental task, um, but 
uh, you know, I think that's yeah, that's that's certainly admirable of them that they actually stand by their product that um, you know that much. Uh, I've always thought when it comes to Linux distributions, if they ever wanted to monetize it, I thought like providing paid for support would be the way to go. So you could you could download your, your Linux distribution, install it and use it. And if you were comfortable fixing your own errors or using forums and community support, that would be that'd be fine. But if you wanted someone like on the other end of a phone or um, instant messaging client to support you in specific issues, then, you know, a couple of quid a month, you know, might go some way to um uh, you know, uh, as a good service and as a way of supporting a distribution. Now, there's not really too much to say about this once it's up and running. Uh, one of the things I do like about it, and it comes, so this is the Mate version, obviously, that I'm running. Uh, I do like Mate. It doesn't come with the Mate tweak tool, but it's as easy as, as installing it. Uh, I've got a custom theme here, which is um, the dark uh, ad waiter theme, but with the Greybird window borders. And I think it looks pretty slick. Um, the default one is comes with Greybird pre-installed. All of these have come pre-installed. Um, yes, Rebellion material, which is fine. It looks like um, a modified version of the Arc theme. So there's that, um, and it comes with a few. It comes with a few good ones and um, a, a good number of backgrounds. I know again a really superficial thing, but. I don't know. I just, I just, it, to me, it's it. It's not necessarily about the backgrounds. It's about the fact that they've got that little bit of attention to detail, just to make it a little bit more pleasant out of the box experience. You can, you know, show it to someone and 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 just, you know, give them a bit of a run through, a bit of an example. Uh, when I installed it, the fonts were set at size 12, so I just put them down to size 10. That's just a size I'm more comfortable with. Um, but to each their own. Um, one thing I will say about it is that it doesn't actually come with um, a, a package updater. It doesn't it doesn't uh, give you any sort of update notifications. And if you want to update the system, you have to go sudo apt. Um, in fact, actually, because this is Debian, uh, I, you know, you do sudo dash and then apt upgrade, which is a simple enough process if you're comfortable with the command line. Uh, I would say at its current state that it's perhaps not you know suitable for people who either need a, a rock solid stable system because it is based on Debian stable and again it is a new distribution it is a sort of a fledging distribution it's it's quite um, you know it's, it's it's quite far down the distro wa distro watch rankings at the moment but um, but I gotta say like if it if it if it keeps on with this game it's going to do quite well I think if you if you're looking for something that's Debian based but perhaps has like really up to date software in the realm of uh, with Arch. Um, if they can get together like a good community and they can get together a good sort of supportive community, I think this distribution has some real legs to it. Um, I think other than that, that's about the uh, that's about all I've got to say. There's not too much. Oh, it comes when you install it. It comes with a nice little video message which sort of explains the the, um, the context of the distribution and also actually one thing which I should point out: the software, uh, the support. Uh, the it comes with a getting started manual which comes in a PDF format which is actually really really good uh, it uses the standard Debian installer which is fine if you if you know the sort of the nomenclature or terminology of, of Linux so you know what a, you know what to name your um, you know your machine on the network and you know what a grub um, you know and, and bootloaders are and stuff like that um, it uses the proper terminology so it doesn't treat you like an idiot but it does have very straightforward documentation so it's uh, it's a bit of a odd way to download it so you have to click this and then it emails it to you and then you download it which is an, which is an, a strange way of doing it but the I've you know I've read through it and it's it's a, it's a really good getting started guide um, again it sort of walks you through the Debian installation process it tells you what to do tells you how it's different all that kind of stuff and it does use quite straightforward terminology um, but yeah other than that it comes with all of the fruits that uh, Debian Unstable does it, if you're looking for something that's you know that's basically Debian Unstable with non-free stuff NVIDIA drivers out of the box codec support all that kind of stuff it's great oh uh, one more thing of course I usually install Keypass X because it is compiled against is Qt4 and the theming is nice and consistent. If you look, if you're wondering what the black text text is, that's just uh, deactivated menu options. And there is also look and feel Qt4 settings here, so you can have a mess around with them. Uh, so yeah, this is a bit of a uh, 
uh, a shorter Linux um, distribution first impressions review than usual, uh, mainly because the parameters are pretty straightforward and you kind of know what you expect. Um, someone did um, email into the Linux Action Show a couple of weeks ago and they did suggest that if you are running a rolling distribution to use a file system and take daily snapshots of it or take snapshots of it before you upgrade and then upgrade and if the upgrade goes wrong then uh, then you can just simply roll back. So the Snaptic Package Manager is pretty much the the expected way to install stuff through the GUI. And of course you can uh, install software through the command line as well. And it to me, at least it just seems easier to, to upgrade through the command line as well. I pretty much do that almost as out of habit now because it is just sudo apt upgrade, bish bash bosh, you're done. Um, good distribution. Um, I'd like to see this one, uh, you know, develop a fair bit and, uh, and and get some steam behind it because I would like to see a Linux distribution um, suddenly come out of India as well because, you know, we see the, uh, you know, Linux distro community is one that is very, very international. It's, it's and, I, and I really, you know, that is one of my favorite things about the, the Linux community is just how, you know, universal and globe trotting it is. And, um, and I like to see uh, an Indian distribution uh, in the mix with that as well. Uh, I also would like to see uh, a, a you know a strong distribution based on Debian unstable with a good um, amount of community support behind it. It could be the you know it could be sort of like Arch but on Debian. You know that that is something that a lot of people I feel would have a degree of enthusiasm behind. So, like I say, I really hope this distribution takes off. I hope that uh, you know I, I feel that it's got legs and uh, it's certainly worth checking out in a virtual machine um, or possibly on like a secondary machine if you just want a quick and easy way of getting um, a Debian unstable um, installation up and running. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching and uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.